Hello and a very warm welcome to today's session brought to you by Team Grade Up. I hope you all are doing really well. Through the course of this lecture, we will be looking at another important person associated with modernism who is actually representing Irish modernism as well as European modernism. Uh, this is, of course, James Joyce. James Joyce is telling us about uh, an important aspect related to modernism that is basically uh, the stream of consciousness to be called as the interior monologue. What is happening inside the minds of the characters with minimal plot. So his novels are single day wonders that we are looking at, for example, like Ulysses. And he's experimenting a lot. He's experimenting a lot with the linguistic aspect. So linguistic aspect is, of course, something that is becoming extremely dominant when we are talking about a person like James Joyce that we need to decipher. Let's very, very quickly get started with today's session. Let's very quickly dive in and talk about today's session that is related to James Joyce. Now, please remember, first of all, a lot of times we often get confused we are talking about the Irish Irish writer now uh, I uh, when we're talking about Ireland Ireland was a Catholic dominated country Catholic dominated country and whenever we talk about Catholicism Catholicism is meant to be slightly stricter right it's meant to be slightly stricter uh, so there's of course these religious re uh, restrictions that are there Along with that, there was also, uh, like, you know, the overpowering presence uh, that Ireland was feeling of Great Britain. Uh, Britain was occupying and exercising a lot of control. So there was this entire kind of a hegemonic control that England was having over Ireland. So you can see that, you know, uh, for a writer, what Joyce was saying is these kind of national restrictions, these kind of religious restrictions should not hold any guard. These are not important, right? We are not as writers looking at these things this is what exactly Joyce was trying to talk about this is the main concept that Joyce was looking at that you have to be very mindful and careful about right and of course when we will look at there are three most important works right that includes your Ulysses Ulysses is of course important the portrait of the artist as a young man most of you might have had it in your syllabuses also and Finnegan's Wake along with that there is Dubliners the short story collection that he's writing from which multiple times they've uh, asked questions so that is also going to be important. Let's very quickly see how many of you have joined us. Uh, all right, I'm just switching this on. Just give me one second. Uh, all right, all right, all right. Uh, so I can see, I can see Payal, Tenzing, Anita, Zeba, Tiasa, Divya, Neha, Zishan, Vijay, Talat, Bharati, uh, Kuhu, Jyoti, Gopinath, Sana, Liji, Bloomsday, uh, Sukirti, Vandana, Munmun, Shubhi, Akanksha is there. There's Payal uh, who has joined us. Good evening, Vidya. Good evening, Bachri. Good evening. And let's see at the classroom platform. We're having Vedvyas. Uh, uh, we are having... One second. All right, we're having Vedavyas, we're having Anubha, we're having Sneha, we're having Kanchan, uh, Samali, Anubha, uh, Haika, Rabia, M. Nagas, there, Amina, Mihir, Shruti, Sahila, everyone's joined. Okay, perfect. As and when more of them are joining, uh, we will definitely continue. Let's very, very quickly get started with this unit on James Joyce. Very simple yet important modern writer that you have to look at, that you need to be familiar with, especially when you're talking about your entrances. Very quickly, I'll share the link also on the telegram channel so that all of you are aware that we've started with this session all right um today the entire day i've been like you know running a little late i don't know what's wrong with today okay um that's also because of some reasons anyway so uh here we will be looking at james joyce please ensure that you're connecting on the telegram channel and um okay uh, once when the things get started i will keep you posted on the telegram itself don't worry about it uh especially for the pdfs and some other initiatives that we will be getting for all of you that just got pushed by a week don't worry about that but we are also even more uh eager to help you out so that 
there are certain two to three new things that we will be adding on uh, from today tomorrow onwards on this telegram channel itself so be uh, like you know stay tuned so to say so nirja english ugc net is the name of the telegram channel you can collect all the pdf as well as certain series and endeavors that we'll be starting you can get connected on the telegram channel and be associated with it okay let's very quickly take a look at today's quiz all right let's start with today's quiz the first question is what do we mean by capsule criticism what do we mean by capsule criticism and who is the person associated with this term who is the person associated with this term so there is a person associated with the term capsule criticism what is capsule criticism and who is the person associated with capsule criticism very very quickly <clears throat> right let's see how many of you zeba bachi that has got a little delayed all right that's got a little delayed i apologize for that all right that's got a little delayed because even i'm trying to give uh, like you know structure and method to this crazy madness that's going around right but don't worry don't worry that just got pushed by a week your short videos will be also coming and uh, there's a good I, I i'm glad that you know we we delayed the process because there's a better even better idea that will help all of you in the form of short videos okay so don't worry they'll be just starting very shortly the short videos will be starting very shortly. shortly and we will be keeping you posted about it all right we'll keep you posted about it uh, over the telegram channel don't worry you will get all the updates on the telegram channel okay what is the right answer here everyone what do you think is the right answer over here sorry right good evening kesar good evening gursha good evening nitin good evening everyone i'm sitting in a very tight spot today <laughs> this sense like i don't know how to move okay very good very good jyoti gupta from the yt platform has given the right answer let's see at the classroom platform if anyone's managed to give the right answer uh, from the classroom very good amina amina has given the right answer amina a uh, good evening aditya good evening bachche good evening uh, amina has given the right answer anubha has given the right answer very good anubha haika has given the right answer shabash very good very very good very good shruti is also absolutely right shruti is also absolutely right that you know this is a term that we are borrowing uh, Uh, predominantly from the journalistic way of writing right this is something that is getting borrowed this is something that is getting borrowed from the journalistic way of writing all of you are absolutely right most of you have got it bang on alexander volcott alexander volcott right he is an american critic that we are talking about you must keep uh, so who is the person associated with the term capsule criticism there is a person who is called as alexander volcott right alexander volcott he is an american critic who had coined the term capsule criticism okay now uh, for example if i ask you today that what do we mean by post humanism or if i ask you what do we mean by uh, like you know the new theories that are emerging how would you define eco feminism or eco criticism so you know you will keep on saying things but i will say no tell me the crux of it right tell me the gist of it tell me the concise just like a capsule so a capsule when you when you are going uh, for a medicine what happens in, in the capsule when you open the capsule the entire the, the body of the capsule is not important but the ingredients are very important the capsule basically has the gist of a material that can help you cure your disease so please remember capsule criticism was a very quick concise criticism method right uh, he was saying you know what walcott was saying while examining the critics he said that these critics go on and on and on uh, and and there isn't a lot of merit that is coming out of it and ultimately if we have to study the works of the critics like a text we have to study the works of the critics like a text that you know what is inside it what is inside it that was true that was so true like even today if i'll tell you okay please revise theory and we will start with videos next week onwards on theory you'll be like okay fine i will start revising it but uh, how do you how do you uh, like you know what is the gist of 
this theory? What do we mean by this theory? What is the crux of this theory? All those questions you will be having for all of us, right? So capsule criticism, when we are talking about capsule criticism, he is saying that be very concise with your criticism. You should be able to put down, you should be able to pen down, you should be able to pen down within two to three lines. What do you mean? You should be able to pen down within two to three lines. What essentially are you meaning? All right. And you know, there's a very famous line why I really like uh, Alexander Wolcott is because he's saying Wolcott is Alexander Wolcott is saying a very simple thing that all the things that I really like are either uh, like, you know, either immoral, illegal or fattening or fattening. So imagine if someone is like a foodie. So uh, that that's also an illegal, immoral and fattening. So that's, of course, what he's trying to say that the society always poses restrictions on all of us. But yes, Alexander Wolcott, uh, Wolcott, this is a direct question. Whenever you get a question in your teaching exams, it's a very common question. Capsule criticism. Capsule criticism is associated with Alexander Wolcott. Capsule criticism is associated with Alexander Wolcott. Put everything in a capsule. Tell me the crux of it. Be concise. Can you put it down on paper? That is capsule criticism. That is capsule criticism. So please be careful about it next time when you're looking at it. Hi, Abriti. Okay, let's very, very quickly come on to the next question. Let's very, very quickly come on to the next question that we are having. Who is associated with the term anti-literature? Who is associated with the term anti-literature? When we're talking about anti-literature, there is a person associated with anti-literature. Who is that person associated with anti-literature? <laughs> Uh, Jyoti Bache, uh, you know, uh, when you're talking about postgraduate teaching exams, the level of the questions is more surface level. However, uh, you know, now they've even started giving some detailed questions or some questions that are coming from specific um, kind of writers. So you have to be prepared. So if you're preparing for net indirectly, you are getting prepared for PhD, but uh, you have to certainly look at the certain writers and detail that the PhD curriculum is mentioning. So that is there. Yes, Neha, that's it. Not just summarizing, but it's the responsibility of a critic to tell everything in brief. It is the responsibility of a critic to inform everything in brief. That is the responsibility of a critic. That is the core responsibility of a critic. Okay. Uh, Walikam Aslam Saeed. I'm doing good. Thank you so much for asking. Okay. What is the right answer? Good evening, Karan. All right. What is the right answer? Anti-literature. 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 <laughs> Okay, let's see at the classroom platform if anyone's been able to answer this question correctly. <laughs> okay. Yogesh has written Tristram Shandy. Uh, yeah, Tristram Shandy is definitely anti-literature. It isn't following the conventional way of writing. It surely isn't following the conventional way of writing. Okay, here very, very quickly, I'll give you another, uh, like, you know, say 10 seconds more let's see how many of you get the correct answer no idea okay now see when you're talking about anti-literature anti-literature was actually a term that was coined by david gasson right david gasson is a person who's associated with the term anti-literature anti-literature he was a british he was a british poet he is a british poet who was influenced by french surrealism and what was surrealism surrealism was anti-literature surrealism was anti-literature he was influenced he was influenced by surrealism he was influenced by surrealism. French surrealism was the main source of inspiration when you are looking at the work of David Gascon, right? When you're looking at the work, where is this gone? Yeah. When you're looking at the work of David Gascon, right? When you're looking at the works of David Gascon, he is a person who was a British poet. He will be, uh, if you are referring to Edward Albert, you'll be able to see um, in Edward Albert, he's been mentioned, right? In Edward Albert, he's been mentioned. So you'll be able to see him also. Um, Yes, Pache, but we are talking about critical term, right? Of course, they're all anti-literature, Lakshmi. Of course, they're all anti-literature. But when you're talking about people like David Gasson, when you're talking about people like Alexander Walcourt, these are people associated with these terms, right? These are people who are associated with these terms. That is what you have to keep in mind, all right? Of course, of course, everyone is anti-tradition in the modern period. But who is the person associated with the term? David Gascon is associated with the term. David Gascon is the person who's associated with the term. I hope there are no problems in this question. I hope this is absolutely clear that how David Gascon is associated with the term anti-literature. 
okay please keep this in mind this is also another important question that is the reason i told you that sometimes when you are free you know uh, even if for example if you're waiting for the video uh, once or twice this has happened right that because of technical glitches the video is starting 5 to 10 minutes late once or twice this has definitely happened in the recent past so what you can do is you can make productive use of the time you can probably open that oxford companion and read all these terms which are coming recurrently okay that's always good very simple question this play of iliad is about the sin of parents and expiation by their successors identify the play identify the play which play are we talking about which play are we talking about the plays of ts eliot are equally important you must look at that okay okay uh very good dev uh, very good jyoti jyoti got the right answer that's fantastic good news uh, all right yes what is the right answer here everyone let's see how many of you get the right answer here what is the right answer here when we are talking about the play by ts eliot uh, ts eliot's plays are equally important they come under modern drama that you must be aware about right that you should know eliot's other plays are equally important right that's also there so do keep that aspect in mind right so what is the right answer from cocktail party murder in the cathedral is of course a must read work murder in the in the cathedral is a Uh, is kind of an epitome of your verse drama and christopher fry and t s eliot were the two dramatists writing verse drama at that time okay let's see how many of you are giving the right answer i can see most of you giving different different answers okay uh Literally, uh, so that is exactly what happens. You know, uh, I I understand that there's no free time. This is what a motto ego says. There are interstices, and there are interstices. Okay, for example, even I have a like a rather pretty uh, pretty hectic schedule because I'm having things on my plate, right, on and off. But still, you know, for example, if my mom's called me for food, right, at five p.m., she will start coming, uh, like you know, because obviously she's uh, looking at other things, so she'll come at five fifteen. So there is like you know, fifteen minute window. I'm just giving you an example, and these. These fifteen minutes can also be well utilized as students because you know we have written our notes. We can always read it. We can always review it. We can always review our uh, lesson plan in advance. So there are these little little minutes, and if you count for it, that is the reason. Always try and use your weekly planner. There is a Google Calendar also. Just open that Google Calendar of the day, and always before a day prior, try to slot your hours. You will see that you know you waste a lot of time. We look that we are busy, but actually we're wasting a lot of time, and it helps us to get structure also. Okay. Yes. Uh. So what is the right answer? What is the right answer? I can see some of you giving this. Yes, the bus. So even chronology is asked. All right. Uh, no, Akarshan, I'm always answering your questions. Don't lie, okay? I'm always answering your questions, Akarshan. Right? Okay. Let's see at the classroom platform. How many of you? Very good. Very good. Classroom platform. Everyone has given the right answer. Uh, classroom platform. Everyone has given the right answer. Right? Uh, all of you are absolutely right. The family reunion is the right answer. The family reunion. Uh, there was a question that was asked also. The family reunion was is written in blank words. right when you're talking about the family reunion it is a work that is written in blank verse so it is written in blank verse that is the first point that you must keep in mind it is written in blank verse that we are having and uh, here of course you know you you are able to see you are able to see uh, how there is this journey that is undertaken by the hero uh, which is very similar to the journey of dostoevsky's characters that even you know uh, dostoevsky's characters undergo uh, when we are talking about Dostoevsky, the writer of *Crime and Punishment*, even his, uh, even his characters are actually moving from this feeling of guilt towards redemption, move a feeling of guilt towards redemption that was there. Um, so of course you you guys are absolutely right. Family reunion is the right answer here, and family reunion is having a very basic theme which is extremely similar to the one that is mentioned in the question. We will do, we will do. What we'll do is, uh, we will take a look at this aspect of modern drama and at least definitely cover the. plays of ts eliot because the plays of eliot are important okay the plays of eliot are important and not just from the examination perspective and why are they important from the examination perspective because they are examples of verse drama and there were only two important people who are very famous christopher fry christopher fry what do we mean by verse drama verse drama is poetic drama verse drama is not prose drama it is actually a poetic form of drama and ts eliot 
Christopher Fry as well as T.S. Eliot. Fry and T.S. Eliot both are there. Right? Fry and T.S. Eliot both are there. Okay? So that is of course there. <coughs> Priya Raj, bache, uh, we give we give options, but we give options dete hai when we are looking at hai, when we are looking at previous year's questions. These are just quizzes that are there, right? These are just quizzes that are there when we look at previous year's questions. At that time, we are practicing like MCQ formats, but this is more like a quiz uh, that is there. Okay, all right. Which American author married four times, joined the army, but committed suicide? Very very simple. I don't think you should take time on this. <coughs> Very good, Tabassum. Very good. Modern drama is important. Modern drama should be covered. You must definitely cover modern drama. Modern drama forms an important part of your syllabus. So it's good that you're covering modern drama. What is the right answer here? Which American author married four times, joined the army, but committed, committed suicide? What is the right answer here? Good evening, Samta. Very good, Priyam. Priyam Shukla has given the right answer. Let's see at the classroom platform. Very good. Very good. Very good. Very good. That is right. That is right. Uh, yes, Samit. But you know, Shrin's play are more coming under the category of Irish revival plays, right? His plays, when we are talking about GM Shrin, GM Shrin's plays are associated. They are characterized. What are they characterized by? They are actually characterized by this entire notion of being a part of your Irish revival. Being a part of your Irish revival. Okay, so that is there. Uh, absolutely correct. Uh, this is absolutely correct. Most of you have given the right answer here. That Ernest Hemingway. <coughs> so sorry. One second. So sorry. Yeah, Ernest Hemingway is absolutely the correct answer. Ernest Hemingway becomes the right answer, right? So when we are talking about, when we are discussing about a person, uh, this is A, American, uh, B, committed suicide, married four times, right? So this is none other than Ernest Hemingway that we are talking about. Hemingway, we've already discussed that Hemingway was a person who's associated with the iceberg technique of writing. He's getting the Nobel Prize as well. He's writing The Old Man and the Sea, which became an American bestseller immediately because it was symbolic of the American spirit of never giving up. It was symbolic of the American spirit of not giving up at all, right? Of not giving up, come what may. All right. Uh... <clears throat> Yeah, Prerna, Prerna Patkar, Prerna Patkar Bachi, uh, I will, uh, we will be sharing that with you, right? Uh, give me some time, right? I will be telling you, I will be telling all of you. It's just that, you know, uh, today, this morning, I just couldn't, um, I just couldn't open my eyes for me to like, you know, complete that. Because I, I, anyway, we, we, we will discuss about that, uh, like, you know, later. But yeah, Hemingway is the right answer here. What is the right answer here? Here we are talking about Ernest Hemingway. Here we are talking about Ernest Hemingway, the recipient of the Nobel Prize, an American Nobel Prize winning writers. You have to even look at all your Americans, all your Indians, all your Europeans who are getting the Nobel Prize. Basically, Nobel Prize writers are also very important for, for, uh, for your examination. Okay, so do keep that in mind very very simple question all of you should get it right Ezra Pound Amy Lowell T.E. Hulm are famous they are famous they are famous extremely easy question this sh you should be getting it within like you know five seconds of reading it what is the right answer <clears throat> ABC Shan I will just talk about the iceberg technique we will just talk about the iceberg technique Yes, 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 that's right. <clears throat> okay, now uh, AB Zishan is asking, what is the iceberg technique that we are talking about? What do we mean by the iceberg technique? See, it's very, very simple when you are talking about the iceberg technique, when you're talking about the iceberg technique, right? Now, for example, when you talk about the iceberg, the iceberg is like, you know, when you look at it, when you look at it from afar, you can only see the tip of the iceberg. You can only see the tip of the iceberg. But there's a lot which has gone inside the iceberg. So Ernest Hemingway's writing is also very simple 
simplistic. Ernest Hemingway's writing is also very simplistic, but don't get confused because of his simplicity. Don't get confused because of his simplicity, because his simplicity is actually trying to cloak, trying to hide some very, very deep meanings that he's talking about, some very important deep discussions that he's undertaking, some very important deep discussions that he's undertaking. All right. So you should keep this aspect in mind, right? Yes, absolutely. Imagism is the right answer. Imagism was known for brevity. Imagism said imagism was also your early modern movement. This was also one of your early modern movement in liter literature, which was asking you to abandon the traditional elaborative style of writing. People were writing in an absolutely fancy, elaborate manner. Whereas, you know, images said, no, that is not true writing at all. If you're not brief, if you're not concise, if you're not able to write things in a, br a brief manner, then you aren't really a writer worth merit, right? You're not worthy of merit at all. So Ezra Pound, Amy Lowell, T. E. Hulme, they're all early modern literature writers. They're all early modern literature writers who are believing in the spirit of imagism. Again, this is also anti-literature anti or anti-tradition, so to say, right? This is also anti-tradition, so to say right so that is something which is important for all of you to keep in mind all right uh okay uh <clears throat> Uh, Prerna, Papal. Papal is actually coming. Yes, 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 Blooms. That's true. Uh, when we are talking about Papal, Papal basically is associated with the Ecclesiastes, right? Is associated with the Ecclesiastes. It's associated with uh, the views that are having your religious. Pope is at the center of the Papal views, right? Pope is at the center of your Papal views. When you are having, you know, something that is considering the Roman Catholic Pope to be at the center and Pope to be the, uh, the central deciding force, that those views are called papal views those views are called papal views okay prena that is papal that is basically papal right uh yes that's true okay let's come on to the next question this novel of hemingway is based on his italian war experience it narrates the story of a man's withdrawal from the war into love a love that ends in futility identify this novel identify this novel so this novel of hemingway is based on his italian war experience it narrates the story of a man's withdrawal from the war into love a love that ends uh in futility. So what is the right answer? Bloomsday Papal is actually associated with the Pope. Pope is of course associated with the church, but it's it's associated. Papal is something a view. When you're talking about uh, Bloomsday, the, the entire, when we are talking about Papal, Papal is something which is associated with Pope. Pope in turn is associated with church. That's a different thing. But Papal is always having Popish association. It's associated with the Pope. Okay, very good, very good, very good, very good. Right. Uh, so again, Ernest Hemingway's and all his important works, they are also equally important. Let's see at the classroom platform how many of you have answered this question. Fantastic, fantastic. Yes, Rabia has given a very good point. Rabia from the classroom platform is saying D.H. Lawrence was also an imagist. See, D.H. Lawrence, and this is a very important question. D.H. Lawrence was an imagist for some time. Then he said, oh my God, you know, why have I learned literature if I'm not able to use the words, right? Why am I even a person who's a writer if I can't really play with my craft? Imagine I'm a carpenter, but I've been told, you know, the limited number of wood that you use to create this, that is going to be innovation. And he'd be like, no, I want to like, you know, ornamentalize it. I want to use more words. I want to express my own self. I want to make my own creation. And you should not be giving me any restrictions, right? So Rabia, you're absolutely right, but partially correct. D.H. Lawrence initially was a part of the images group, but later he abandoned the group. Later, D.H. Lawrence abandoned this group. Please remember this. This. And here the right answer is a farewell to arms, right? Here uh, the answer is a farewell to arms. Ernest Hemingway is a must read writer as it is, right? But here you all are absolutely correct. A farewell to arms becomes the right answer. A farewell to arms becomes the right answer. Ernest Hemingway, you will have to look at Ernest Hemingway. Ernest Hemingway is one of the most important writers. Even when you're talking about, like Jyoti was asking about your TGT, PGT exams, majority of the TGT PGT exam, RPSC exams, they have Ernest Hemingway as their syllabus, right? As a part of their syllabus. 
so you will get questions related to this all right so do keep that in mind yes shanali uh, but we will be covering literary theory as well okay shanali we will be covering literary theory as well where is my notepad gone anyway uh, but we will be of course we will be covering your literary theory aspect also you don't have to worry about it don't know where have i kept my pad anyway uh so so yes of course that is there who calls wordsworth one of the chief glories of english poetry one of the chief glories of english poetry who has called who has called wordsworth one of the chief glories of english poetry who is calling wordsworth one of the chief glories right one of the chief glories of english poetry who said that you know wordsworth is basically one of the chief glories of english poetry who is saying that who is mentioning these words uh, right whom are these words attributed to very very quickly let's see how many of you are able to give the right answer sorry <clears throat> very good very good jyoti kuhu neha zeba uh, dyuti samanta uh, shubhang uh, shubhangi kanchan akarshan akarshan no why coldridge coldridge hated wordsworth in a way right he almost hated wordsworth to begin with okay but some of you are writing coldridge coldridge is not the right answer arnold is the right answer right coldridge is not the right answer let's see at the classroom platform how many of you have answered it anjali why keats why keats anjali uh okay anuba is also writing john crow ransom no bache john crow ransom is not the right answer haika shruti samit yogesh kanchan anuba they've all answered it correctly they've all answered it correctly see when you're talking about one of the chief glories of english poetry one of the chief glories of english poetry here we are talking about here we are discussing about right um Rakesh, it's called cultural studies. You can just go to any bookstore, and uh, it's called the Worldview Edition on cultural studies. It's the Worldview Edition on cultural studies. It's having multiple uh, essays also, which are included inside. So it's the Worldview Edition to cultural studies that you can take a look at. Who calls Wordsworth one of the chief glories of English poetry? All of you are absolutely right. Matthew Arnold. Matthew Arnold considered Wordsworth to be one of the chief glories of English poetry. Right. So that was the correct estimate. That Arnold had given. See, Wordsworth's greatness was uh, recognized by everyone. Some of you have mentioned Ransom. Ransom, but she John Crow Ransom has called him one of the giants of English poetry. I'm really glad. I was really happy to see some of you have also mentioned Ransom. Ransom is calling Wordsworth one of the giants. He is calling them one of the giants. One of the giants of English poetry. One of the giants of English poetry. So I was really happy and. Pressed to see some of you mentioning John Crow Ransom as one of them. So please keep this in mind. If you get the question, oh, who has referred to Wordsworth as one of the giants, then Ransom becomes the right answer. But glories, chief glories of English poetry, then your answer is Matthew Arnold. Okay, uh, many people, many people. For example, there is a critic. There is a critic called J C Smith. J C Smith has called him a mountain. Right, J C Smith. What and this also comes in your exam. What is J C Smith calling him? J C Smith has called William Wordsworth as a mountain. He's saying he is one of the lofty ranges. Right, he is one of the lofty ranges. He is absolutely a lofty range of Romantic revival. And when we are talking about one of the greatest critic of the Victorian period, Matthew Arnold, he said Wordsworth is one of the chief glories of English poetry. Right, Wordsworth is one of the chief glories of English poetry. This has been said by Matthew Arnold. So don't confuse yourself at all. This is being said by Matthew Arnold. Matthew Arnold is saying that. Matthew Arnold is saying that. Right. So that is of course there. Uh, you 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 should actually keep these aspects properly in mind. And obviously we all know that you know he's also considered to be a poet of nature because of the fact that he was a pantheistic uh, writer. He was a pantheistic writer. He believed in the power of nature to transform our spirits. He believed. in the power of nature to transform our spirits right so that was of course another idea so here please keep this aspect in mind that when we are talking about ransom ransom is saying he is one of the giants but chief glories is arnold 
okay chief glories is arnold and mountain is jc smith mountain is jc smith please remember this okay uh, unrhymed iambic pentameter is known as unrhymed iambic pentameter is known as what do we know un iambic un unrhymed iambic pentameter is called what thank you oh that's very sweet of you wow who is practicing previous year's questions that's very good um okay there was a question today in one of the classroom where a student was asking that you know if i'm not prepared and if i'm looking at previous year's questions see if you are not prepared if you've not done the entire syllabus and then if you're doing previous year's questions then i would say uh, reduce the frequency rather than doing one pre previous year question paper or one mock test paper daily you can do one for three to four days and invest a lot of time analyzing your mistakes or analyzing the topics that you have not covered analyzing the topics that you have not covered very good very good very good this is the right answer let's see at the classroom platform how many of you have answered this question correctly shabash anubha rabia anubha i was impressed to see that you had written ransom that that shows that you are studying so i'm glad but just remember he is calling uh, ransom is calling him giant right ransom is calling him giant and chief glories is a term associated with matthew arnold for wordsworth Okay, Rabia, Aziz, Haika, Anand, Bilawat, Bilawat, but she where are you these days? Anand, no, 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 no. Aziz and Anand, no. Aziz, uh, and Anand, free verse has no meter also. Free verse is having no meter also. This is a point that we had discussed very, very recently when we were talking about Trochi, when we were talking about Spondy, when we were discussing about Dactylic, right? When very, very recently we had done questions. When we had recently done questions, this is what we were discussing, right? This is all the things that we were looking at please remember free verse is having no meter free verse is having no meter whatsoever free verse is not having any meter whatsoever unrhymed iambic pentameter is blank verse unrhymed uh, when we are talking about unrhymed iambic pentameter usually usually blank verse is an unrhymed iambic pentameter and this usually is actually 99% of the times okay so blank verse is the right answer free verse is having no meter free verse is having no meter blank verse is the right answer here okay blank verse hi khushi okay uh yeah uh now which book appealed to prince and queen victoria to the prince as well as queen victoria so which book was the one that was actually praised which book was praised by which book was praised by both the prince as well as queen victoria which was the book very very simple question again not that difficult at all no rocket science involved over here and what is the right answer all of you will be telling us what is the right answer here which book appealed to prince and queen victoria we have to get like you know the uh, ac service and done i think it's summers almost okay anyway <coughs> yes what is the right answer very good very good very good okay nice 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 very good no no akarshan nothing like that nothing like that okay yes so what is the right answer here let's see how many of you i'm just praying because you know otherwise i will die out of so sorry otherwise i'll die out of bad odor Sweat is the only thing that I don't like in summers, right? I don't know about you. Like earlier, when I was a kid, I used to love summers because of ice creams, etc. But now, as we're growing big, I don't like it too much. Okay. <laughs> TP meter is the the like you know which particular how are you writing it what is the manner of your writing that gets included in your prosody right the rhythm that you're following the meter that you're using so whenever we are talking about poetry TP uh, see uh, I'm saying certain things you're writing certain things that is not poetry so how is poetry different from normal speech poetry is different from normal speech TP because of the fact that it's it is using rhetoric and prosody because of the fact that it is using both rhetoric rhetoric and prosody it's using both rhetoric and prosody and meter is a part of prosody meter is giving rhythm meter is giving pattern meter is ensuring a particular manner in which the poetry is getting written most of you have got this answer absolutely right most of you have got this answer absolutely right in memoriam is the right answer okay uh, some of you have mentioned adam bead uncle tom's cap and see these were all praised these were all oh no 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 
fairy a uh, queen fairy is no work sadam queen fairy is no work at all okay queen fairy is no work at all in memoriam see what had happened both of them really liked both of them really liked in memoriam and you know when when uh, uh, ultimately a uh, prince passed away when prince passed away then when again queen victoria was reading it in 1871 she got even more connected with the work she got even more connected with the work she could actually see a glimpse of her uh, reality being uh, presented in this particular book she could actually see that she could actually see that that you know her entire story her entire life journey was in a way getting uh, projected the feelings that she was having basically you know we all undergo same feelings if we lose someone dear to us right uh, and particularly the grief is even more if the person is like you know no more in, on this planet then we feel even worse so that is what we are talking about and in memoriam is the work which actually enables ts eliot to become the poet laureate when samuel rogers rejects it samuel rogers rejects it after the death of william wordsworth okay uh, all right let's do one or two last questions and then get into the topic cambridge university is mentioned in which romantic work this question has been asked twice in your net exams like not like this but in different manner like cambridge university is mentioned in which work uh, which university is there in the romantic writers work so this is there this is a question that is asked <coughs> right 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 so sorry right what is the right answer very very quickly cambridge university is mentioned in which romantic work cambridge university is mentioned in which romantic work very good very good that is true that is true jyoti jyoti is on fire today ha huh? shout outs for jyoti uh, right so i hope um, we all know shout outs are like you know special praises that we are having big shout outs for jyoti ha huh? she is just doing very well today jyoti you have studied ha huh? jyoti kuhu they all studied today uh, okay 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 Mm-hmm. So sweet. Okay. Yes. Uh, why are all of you writing mist? Okay. But your romantic work, romantic work. Uh, the spiritual autobiography, the prelude. Prelude is also equally important to work, right? The spiritual autobiography, prelude, is the romantic work which is mentioning Cambridge University. Is the romantic origin work which is mentioning Cambridge University. So Cambridge University is mentioned in the prelude. Cambridge University is mentioned in the prelude. Okay. It is mentioned in the prelude. Okay. Uh, so do remember that. Uh. no worries neha it it often happens my net is also bad pretty much a lot of times all right so cambridge university is mentioned in the prelude okay let's very quickly get started with the main topic of discussion and we'll continue with the questions don't worry about it okay we will continue with the questions uh, during the night school class let's quickly come on to what we were discussing today james joyce okay um uh, we were left with virginia wolf don't worry i will try to cover it like you know in tomorrow's marathon classes that are prepared for all of you okay one more thing uh, tomorrow and day after you are having your marathon classes tomorrow at 7 pm i will share the schedule is your cultural studies marathon class uh, like i have been saying please go through the lecture on cultural studies that we had given before because that will really help you in tomorrow's session because we will be covering the most important theory writers we will be covering the most important theory writers who are there so do make it a point that you are reading and for monday also so give me some time when i'll i'll just tell you uh, monday also there is a session there is a marathon session that is uh, lined up for you actually i had given the schedule last week so i have um like um I'm I'm not thoroughly remembering it, but I will I will let you know about it. Okay, I'll I'll let you know. But both both on uh Sunday that is tomorrow and on Monday at seven p.m. you're having your marathon session, so don't forget to join them completely. And um, your short videos also don't worry, they are starting very soon. Uh, within a day or two, you should be getting your short stories, and that too in a better format, in a better format, in a more structured way. And we will share the schedule also for that. Don't worry. Okay, now when you're talking about James Joyce, please remember James Joyce is. 
is coming from Ireland. That is how he's a little different from our other British canonical writers like Virginia Woolf and D.H. Lawrence because these people are fighting just about because of world war, uh, chaos, uh, Freudian analysis, inner mind. But he's having a further layer of complexity, Irish nationalism. Irish nationalism. Ireland's plea for nationalism. Now, please remember there are two types of colonization. All right. There are two types of colonization. Listen to this very carefully. Okay. There are basically two types of colonization. One is coercive colonization. Coercive colonization. What do we mean by coercive colonization? Coercive colonization basically means when you are using brute force when you're using brute force, when you're using force in order to subjugate me, when you're wanting to subjugate me and you're using a lot of force, like they did it in India, okay? The second type of colonization is basically psychological colonization. Psychological colonization was that you were not taking the freedom, right? You were giving them freedom and independence, but you were ruling them. You were controlling their minds. You were controlling their minds minds when you are trying to subjugate the minds of people that is what had happened in scotland that is what had happened in ireland these people were literally subjugated they thought that they were inferior to the britishers they thought that you know they were not at par with the britishers their minds were totally controlled even after getting getting like you know a military independence they were still bogged down they were still really worried they were still very concerned about their freedom and independence right so that is, of course, a point that you have to keep in mind. He was a person, right, when we are talking about James Joyce, when we are discussing about James Joyce, James Joyce is writing at a time when Irish nationalism, Irish nationalism was moving at a very fast pace. People were thumping with energy. People wanted independence at any cost. People wanted to break away from the shackles of the British colonial rule, right? And ultimately, that even precipitated in success. But again, Irish people, uh, even till date, are under psychological enslavement right under psychological enslavement because they consider britishers to be a little better and superior than them all right so that was of course there also keep in mind he was a person experimenting with the form of writing he was very concerned about linguistics and he said that you know we often ignore and uh, you know we don't even realize the words that we are picking but actually when we try to analyze the language that is used by a writer it shows us great deal of understanding about the work it shows us great deal of understanding about the kind of work that is getting written right so an analysis of linguistics was important according to him analysis of linguistics was important according to him okay now when we are talking about ireland in ireland a lot of families majority of the families were catholic majority of families at that time they were catholic unlike britain unlike britain britain was predominantly protestant but here in ireland predominantly we were dealing with a catholic family predominantly we were dealing with a catholic community right it was a catholic community that we were looking at okay now what happened was that he was born he was born in a well of catholic family he was born in a well of catholic family but till the time when he was growing up there was a gradual decline there was a gradual decline right there was a gradual decline what is this showing this is showing you that you know there was a collapse there was a social transformation taking place across europe social transformation taking place across europe at the especially at the beginning of 20th century why because aristocracy was collapsing there was a collapse of aristocracy there was a collapse of aristocracy okay so do remember that all right uh <clears throat> Yes, Prena, we will be discussing that also. What is your strategy? We will talk about that also. Talat, coercive colonialism is colonialism by force. I force you. I have more power. I can I can abduct you. I can kidnap you. I can put you into uh, like, you know, my uh, my captivity. I will not allow you to go. That is coercive colonialism. I'm using brute force. I'm using physical strength. You know, when parents hit their child or in order to ensure that the child listens to them, that is coerciveness. That is coerciveness. Right? What is that? That becomes an example of coerciveness. That becomes an example of coerciveness. That is an example of coerciveness that is there. Okay? 
so and psychological is when you're trying to control mental processes when you're trying to tell like prime of miss jean broody what is happening in muriel sparks uh jean broody is trying to control them mentally jean broody is trying to control the the broody set mentally okay yes of course uh, you can say they are repressive state apparatuses okay uh all right now then he had gone he had had an education at the jesuit institutions okay he had a good in education at the jesuit institutions now what do we mean by jesuit what do we mean by jesuit when we're talking about jesuit what essentially do we mean by jesuit right this entire word that you're able to see what do we mean by jesuit what do we mean by jesuit jesuit right so when when we are using the term when we are using this term jesuit when we are talking about this term jesuit what do we mean by this term jesuit jesuit is basically a member um of the society of jesus you know member of the society of jesus that was there it's a religious group that you're having okay and uh, it was a religious group that you were having which had catholic influences basically a religious group with catholic influences is jesuit okay now he completely rejected the idea of becoming priest he rejected he said no 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 i don't want to be restricted i don't want to be uh, associated with one body completely and i don't want to go for religious pursuits okay so he rejected religion uh, and religious association uh, and he said no no i don't want to get into this domain at all i'm not interested in this okay i'm not at all interested in this that was something that he was looking at okay i am uh, so sorry but here don't worry too much about it i will just tell you what is most important part what you have to remember is he was a person he was a person who was always really excited about how he could make sure uh, see understand this because if you understood this you've understood everything the irish people were very concerned the irish people were very very concerned and why were they very concerned the irish people were very concerned because of the fact the irish people were very concerned because of the fact that irish people were not having any sort of pride they were not having any sort of honor in their own culture they were uh, there was absence of pride and honor in their own culture they could never take pride in their own culture this was a crisis this was a moment of crisis so people like william butler yeats they are coming up with irish revival they are saying okay fine you know all of you are fighting for independence but don't forget that irish people are not confident don't forget that irish people are not at all confident now people like james joyce they had taken a different route they had taken a different route right they were also very similar to what uh, like you know the irish revival was doing they were also saying that we have to now irish revival was what was irish revival saying understand this because if you understood this point you understood everything people like people like you know william butler yeats are saying this is the colonial period this is the colonial period go back to the pre colonial times go back to the pre colonial times listen to this very carefully listen to this very carefully what is what are people like william butler yeats saying people like william butler yeats are saying go back to the pre colonial life for example you know we will say okay go back to the india that was there before the britishers came then i'll be like okay before the britishers there was a mughal period they were also people who had invaded our country then you'll be like okay fine go before the period that the mughals had come then you'll be like okay there was another another invasion right because we we've, we've been a land of invasions unfortunately there is no pure self there is no pure pre colonial self there is no pure pre colonial self that is what writers like joyce believed joyce said okay fine you want to go back you want to go back but there is no pure going back to so thus he is saying that the role of the writer is to forge is to create the uncreated conscience of my race that is how even uh, the portrait of the artist as a young man is ending just understand this because if you have understood this concept right if you have understood this concept you will not have problems there are two things okay there are two things first of all ireland was undergoing psychological colonialism also ireland was undergoing psychological colonialism also that they started feeling inferior because of this feeling people like william butler yeats started the irish revival they said okay fine if you people are not confident let me tell you about the irish culture let me tell you how rich the irish culture is let's go back to the pre colonial celtic culture G writers like james joyce are saying no you can't go back because there is no proper back there is no pure back 
you can't really go back to the pre colonial times because that is also having problems so they are saying let us forge let us now create the uncreated conscience of my race uncreated conscience of my race this is a question that has been asked in your net exams also conscience of my race what is joyce believing joyce says that let's create the uncreated conscience of my race let's create the uncreated conscience of my race right let's truly truly try and create the uncreated conscience of my race that is what he's wanting to talk about okay now uh, see what we'll do is uh, at the 10 pm class very very quickly because today we have previous year's questions we will very quickly uh, take a look at a quiz okay we'll do some questions and after the quiz questions before doing the previous year's questions let us very very quickly look at james joyce and also complete virginia wolf okay then after that we will do previous year's questions okay so let's do this because these are also important and then we'll figure it out okay All right so I will see you guys at 10 pm please take very good care of yourself and if there are any doubt yeah supriya i re i recognized i recognized okay <laughs> okay supriya all right thank you so much for joining in i will see you guys at 10 pm take good care any doubts do let me know all right god bless bye yes of course rabia epiphany is also coming here all right uh okay pooja we'll we'll let's meet at 8 o'clock class and then i'll explain it to you okay if you have the same doubt Thank <laughs> you.